Podcasts, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the podcast. There are four lights! It's five-year mission to explore strange, familiar worlds. To seek out new listeners and new civilizations. To boldly go where most nerds have gone before. Join Matt and Shirley on their five-year mission with a different guest each week as they talk about an episode of Star Trek from the original series through Enterprise. They'll cover every episode, eventually. Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining us on our first episode of There Are Four Lights. See, I didn't yell it as loud as I could have. Um, I've been uh, teasing Shirley for the last um, couple of months by screaming that a lot and yeah. very loudly at inopportune times. Um, so I'm Matt, and I'm here with Shirley. Hello. We're going to be the regular hosts here, but we're also guest, joined by a guest tonight, uh, Daryl Skeels, the, the Trek nerd. Hello. Yeah, so uh, Daryl, you're one of the co-hosts of This Week in Trek, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're on the Grumpy Cast as well. I, I can't honestly say that I've ever listened to the Grumpy Cast. Well, it's it's not really a Star Trek thing, but if you if you feel like uh, hearing grumpy people, that's where you could go. Is oh. it grumpy old men? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, and then you're on the Warning Stream, uh, what Monday through Thursday, uh, talking about Trek stuff, right? Yeah, they ask me a hard trivia question and try to stump me. Yeah, and you're you do pretty good on those. It doesn't work, right? Yeah, I mean, well, there are some tough ones. <laughs> yeah, there are. Like today, I had to guess, so <laughs> I was lucky. Right on. Uh, well, uh, we're gonna get into this first episode, uh, the first episode of Star Trek that was ever ever aired, uh, the pilot titled "The Cage." Um, so, uh, dun, dun, dun. so the cage is uh, is an odd one. Um, uh, so, Daryl, just so you know, I've never actually watched the original series much at all. I've watched all of the original series movies, but not really the actual series itself. So this one was, I knew this was going to be weird, but this was new to me. And surely, I don't think you've ever seen the pilot, have you? Yes, I have. You have? Yes. I thought but you were all confused today. I was a little bit at the beginning, but... Oh, okay. um, but no, I've seen and, it. And Daryl, you've seen this one before, right? Yeah. The Actually, the <laughs> first time I saw it was it was in black and white because there were no other copies that existed, and it was at a Gene Roddenberry talk that he gave. Oh, wow. So nice. that was really a treat. Wow. Um, and this is, uh, uh, there's a lot of people in this, uh, only, what, uh, two that really show back up in any big way. Uh, Majel Barrett, who becomes... Um, Mrs. Troy in The Next Generation. It is. Yeah, but she becomes um, Nurse Chapel before that. Oh, does she? Mm-hmm. That's right. See, I haven't gotten that far. <laughs> um, and then, But she's also the voice of the computer throughout the rest of the series. The all those series. I mean, series. Yeah, well, and I want to say maybe DS9 mm-hmm. and Voyager too, but I could be wrong. Yeah, she's in those. Okay. Um, and then uh, Leonard Nimoy as Mr. Spock, a very different Mr. Spock. Yeah. Uh, one that shows emotion and smiles and... Um, isn't uh, wooden, which, you know, that's how he's supposed to play Mr. Spock, but it was different, definitely different. Yeah, they they weren't quite sure what they were going to do yet. Yeah, um, so, uh, Shirley, you want to walk us through a little bit of the plot on this one? Um, basically, it's, um, uh, Captain Pike is taking the crew back from Rigel 7, they've just been in this big battle, and they get a distress call, and um, it ends up looking like the distress call has come from a vessel that has disappeared in a far off, um, a far off I don't know, solar system. Solar system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that um, eight prior eighteen years earlier. So um, that's the basic plot, and then they're going to go inspect and rescue the crew, you know, yeah. from being lost. Okay. Um, so uh, we don't have Captain, um, wow, not Picard. Kirk. Captain Kirk. Kirk, good night. I'm really in charge of this podcast. <laughs> I can totally do this. Uh, so we don't, do we, we don't have, over? we don't have Kirk. Uh, there's no bones. There's I'm, literally, nope. it's only Spock is the only person in that crew that, that really, I mean, 
um, number one, who is played by Major Barrett, becomes Nurse Chapel, but mm-hmm. that's that's a recasting completely. Um, so, Daryl, what did you think of uh, Jeffrey Hunter as Captain Pike? Um, he he did a good job, I thought. He he's no Captain Kirk, but um, mm-hmm. uh, I liked his performance in this. Okay. Um, yeah, I felt like it was. Um... I mean, it seemed like honest. You could believe in the character and where he was going. Some of the script seemed a little halting. Yeah. I, I guess I would say it just um, it seemed believable. But you know, seeing Spock throughout the rest of the series, um, especially when he's with the 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 true crew. Yeah, yeah. Air quotes right there. Um, uh, it just. It, it felt a little off to me because I, you know, I haven't seen this episode for a very long, for a little bit, for uh, a couple <laughs> years, and <laughs> and um, it just was weird because he he seemed like he didn't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I I think Leonard Nimoy. Uh, I honestly I can't think of anything other than Fringe that I've seen Leonard Nimoy in that in Star Trek, but uh, I've seen him in something else, but I can't. Remember he's always well. He's always been a very serious character, and everything he does, I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever seen him smile until today, <laughs> um, which was awkward. Um, it's not that he has a bad smile; it's just not what I expect from him. So it was weird. Yeah. Um, and then um, there, you know, there was some weird uh, sexism <laughs> thrown in there. Well, um, well, I mean, how you know. How, I, I, how old is the series? Well, this I was don't remember 60, when, it was out, when it came out in the sixties. Yeah, this was sixty. This one was made in sixty four. Okay. okay. I just I don't remember the original series having that. Again, I haven't watched it, but I don't remember there being that. I I know there was like an unspoken like Uhura just answers the phone, but <laughs> yeah. um, I don't remember it being as blatant because he essentially tells. Uh, Yeoman, or he says uh, about the yeoman who's a female, I'm just not used to having women on this ship, when his number one is also a woman. Yeah. And, yeah. But, it's your, but that's different. She's part of the boys club. <laughs> yeah, know, I just... She's an officer. <laughs> I, I don't know. It just was very... I, I It surprised me. It caught me off guard a lot. Yeah. Um, not that I don't expect that, you know, sci-fi and stuff from the 60s, sometimes it's just going to be a little off like that. But right. It's kind of reflecting the time that it was made, I think. Yeah. 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 This is a little bit before bra burning, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I like I had this thought in the beginning, right when they got on the transporter the first time. I feel like I'm watching a sci-fi bonanza. Really? Well, yeah. that's really actually what it was supposed to be. See. Why not? <laughs> well, I, and uh, you know, I. The story itself was okay. The I, I honestly think the script was... I, I get what you're saying. It was halting, but I don't think it was bad. Yeah. Um, the story was just as wonky as any other Star Trek that I've ever seen. Uh, yeah. it, it definitely had a weird feel to it, but the aliens were very alien, like they should have been. Yeah. And, and um, it actually kind of reminded me of the way Q acts in um, uh, the first episode of Next Generation. Mm-hmm. Um, just that that superiority to humans. Right. Um, and I, I kind of like that. I like that, that far point, um, goes to touch on that subject again and kind of bring it around. I like, I like the touch of that. So, yeah, I, I like the, the big headed aliens with their pulsing veins. <laughs> it's yeah. It's the, it, those are probably my favorite Star Trek alien. Well, in the back of their heads look like butts. Yeah. That, that was, that, that was fun too. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, I felt going back to the alien and pulsing veins. Um, I thought it was like very neat because, you know, you're you're looking at the um, the effects, the the yeah. And I was I was like, okay, I can tell that it's a revolving whatever in the background where the stars are, and they split the screen and. Yeah, and I was like, okay, this is this is kind of horrible. But when it came to the aliens and their makeup and the baby, oh, yeah. I was like, wow, that's well, pretty. Well, the monkey you know, creature dance. in in one of the cages was clearly just a costume, but yeah, it, but it wasn't. It was not that bad. Um, the bird guy was scary. <laughs> the bird guy was 
was oh, really freaking God, creepy. The bird guy was scary. Um, and there was some weird editing there, but again, this was a pilot, so a little. I I also expect pilots to be a little rough, um, especially for sci-fi when they they know they don't have the budget to really do the the special effects. Yeah. I thought that um, some of the stuff that you saw that was obvious, I I just wrote off as eh, it was the '60s, not that bad. Yeah. Um, I've seen I've seen worse from stuff from the '80s and '90s, so I can't really. <laughs> You know, I can't really complain about that either. Yeah. Um, this this show, Star Trek, was very original and, and different. There really hadn't been anything like it before. Everything before had been really cheesy and kind of badly done and dorky, almost on purpose. Yeah. Well, so and even looking... to actually step it up then. Well, and we watched, uh, for our other podcast, we watched The Blob uh, from the Criterion Collection. And right. the special effects there... Um, they were a little, they were a little um, rougher than what we saw today, too. Mm-hmm. And that's, and so I, I guess, I guess in my opinion that, yeah, I get what you're saying. I just, I just kind of accepted it for what it was, though. Yeah. And I, yeah. and at the time, I guess looking at it, I, if I was in alive in '65, I would have been like, wow, that is awesome and amazing. Yeah. So, um, little Star Trek trivia because I have no idea. Um, so. With the 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 series, the first series of um, or the first season of Star Trek, did they really do any groundbreaking special effects that affected the you know the industry? Mm, not really. They they animated phasers. They used a blue screen. I'm not sure how. I think blue screen was in use way before that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, um, the the phasers, the the special effects on the phasers weren't bad, but it was definitely not. I think a lot of westerns used the blue screen before. Yeah. Oh, that's Probably. true. I honestly haven't. And those I don't police, think I've watched the, any show where somebody's driving a car in the background. Oh, yeah. Doesn't match. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right on. Uh, so this this episode is unique um, in that both it's a pilot and it has a weird cast, but that. It's also, I think, the only episode of Star Trek that was ever cut up like this to make another episode. That's true. Um, so this becomes the Menagerie, which we'll talk about more at length um, later in in, the, in our in this season of There Are Four Lights. But uh, Daryl, how do you feel about that? What do you, what are your thoughts on that? You've seen both. Yeah, the cutting up of them. I I kind of wish they would have just shown the original and not bothered to make it into a two-part thing. Yeah. It kind of turn, turns it into a crime drama sort of thing. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. So, um, you, are you not the biggest fan of the Menagerie, then? Oh, it's it's fine. But I, I just like the cage a lot better. Okay. Because you, so, you get to see the original thing, and it's there's history there. I guess that's a okay. lot of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So does this sit in like in your like top twenty episodes, or where does this sit for you? I think it probably would be in the top twenty somewhere. May, okay. Maybe not near the top, but it definitely be in there. Okay, yeah, because there's uh, seventy nine episodes, give or take, mm-hmm. of of the original series. You said eighty. Yeah, that's probably right. But uh, okay. Um. So. What what did we 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 got to hear the music for the first time, which that one was nice for me. It has a different feel than the other, um, the other seasons. Uh, yeah, the other shows. Mm-hmm. Um, do you prefer this one? What do you think, Shirley? Um, I, for me, um, it just you know takes me back to my childhood. So I and I really like it. I okay. I think. Um, the most poignant time for me for this music is, um, you know, I watched all the reruns with my dad of um, the original series, and then um, there was no more Star Trek. Yeah. And then TNG came out, and, like, literally I cried. Oh, on really? The first episode <laughs> of TNG, because I was like, it's the music, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and like I welled up and I'm crying and people are looking at me strange and I'm like you don't understand but um, 
no, I I love the music and I think it fits with the with all the the seasons or all the both the shows perfectly. Okay. And movies. Um I think they hit it right on the nose with this. What what do you think, Daryl? Yeah, I totally agree. I th- <clears throat> I thought the music was great. It fit everything really well and they reused some of it later in in the series too. Okay. Right on. Um so Besides the sexism, did anything stick out to you guys that was just weird or odd? <laughs> My favorite part is when Spock grabs the leaves that are going... <laughs> That's yeah. a huge smile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything for you, Shirley? Um, I mean, I don't know. It was all Star Trek-ish, so <laughs> it just... Um, yeah, I think... You can tell um, who had total confidence in their character and who didn't. Yeah. Like when Pike and Vina meet for the first time, um, there's that intensity in the scene, and Definitely. you're just like, <gasps> yeah, and yeah. you're like, oh, they're make you know, they're it's a romance, and you feel it, and with everybody else, it's kind of, you know, you know that the characters are there and they're trying to play out their role and things like that. Um, and like I said, it's just like Spock stuck out like a sore thumb. He it was did. just a like bit, so yeah. weird to see him like that. Um, yeah, and I loved I loved those plants with the leaves, the humming leaves. <laughs> <laughs> well, those, the and I just wondered, like, why why did they just do that plant and oh. not focus on any other of the? the yeah, light, and, well, well, you the remember in the story that they, they don't have any. Nothing else is living yet. Yeah, but in that one scene behind him, there's that orange poofball plant all the way in the <laughs> back. And I was like, what sound does that one make? <laughs> right on. Um, I think the two things that really stuck out were the uh, clearly dressed in 60s plain clothes couple that walked down the, oh. the corridor. Oh, yeah. And then, it, bingo guys. Yeah, and then the doctor shows up and um he's like, uh, what do you what do you make it? What do you what do you get? I'm not sick and he hands him he's like, Well, you don't want your martini cold, do you or warm, do you? And I was like, Oh oh that's right, there's alcohol. Like I guess in my mind, yeah, they're always like especially in next generation, they're always going to ten four, they're always having a drink, but it's clearly not alcohol. They make a point that it's synth hall or it's yeah. synth yeah, synthale. And and this one was, hey, have a martini, which, one, it's very much not a space drink, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, but two, like, like that's just the thing you did in the 60s, and it was a, a lot easier to accept that kind of thing. So, I don't know, it just caught me a little off guard there. Yeah, oh, that's very true. Very 007-ish. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, yeah. And, and I guess Pike's, like, moral dilemma of he doesn't want to be in charge and he's thinking about quitting... That I, I guess that's a good way to start a series, but I don't I don't know if it works for the pilot. Like it didn't make me fall in love with Pike right away. It made me go, oh well, he's going to be gone soon. <laughs> I guess I don't need to worry about him, you know. And you were right, which, <laughs> which ironically he sticks around for that episode, and then we get uh, you know William Shatner. So yeah, I felt. First of all, I felt like that part of it, I I wasn't, I didn't understand. I can see where they were going with the story of it, but he's just like, and I don't want to be responsible for this and that. And I'm like, dude, hold on. You signed up in Starfleet. Yeah. Starfleet would have told you I don't everything think, that well, was necessary. You, I don't. But did you listen I to him talk about, the Star, there, there, there is no Starfleet. He's from the United States space ship oh. or whatever. I mean. Yes. That's right. There is no Starfleet. Yeah, yeah. He like there were some there were some clear like weird some kind of crazy. Yeah, there, those a couple of those things where they just hadn't <clears throat> clearly hadn't decided that there was a Starfleet or anything. So I have a question then because isn't Enterprise supposed to take place before? Yeah. Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, Enterprise takes place I think like a hundred years before Star Trek the original series. And, and it's still Starfleet. Yeah, well, no, so, sort of. <laughs> um, yes, it's Starfleet, Arrow? but Starfleet <laughs> exists before the United Federation of Planets, which actually becomes into existence at the end of Enterprise. You have not watched all of Enterprise, have no, you? No, I have not. Daryl, what is your opinion of Enterprise? <laughs> I'm curious. It's probably my least favorite of all of them, just 
Oh. I don't care for prequels that much. And when you go before something, you put it before everything else, then you can't progress past there. Yeah. Ah. Oh, yeah. No, that's that's a solid point. Or, and you can't introduce things there that then you introduce again later. So, like, the Ferengi, they were all surprised by the Ferengi. But then that report should have gone back somewhere to, you know, Starfleet so that the Next Generation crew wasn't surprised by Ferengi with their electronic whips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Terrible. What do you think about Voyager? Oh, I like Voyager. It's got yeah. too much techno babble. <laughs> in it for me, but I think the casting of that was really great. Yeah, it's Voyager's my least favorite of the series. Um, <laughs> Matt and I have, a, have an ongoing argument about that. Yeah, I, I, I just didn't feel like the writing for that series was as good as it could have been. Yeah, I think, I think the thing that makes me um, identify with Voyager so much is because of the women. Oh you yeah, know, they yeah, oh, yeah. seem but, like they play more of a leadership and oh, yeah. you know forward role than well, they usually have. In the and past. Next Generation had its stories for the two crew that were women, um, and I think DS9 did a, a fairly good job of focusing mm-hmm. on um, Kira. Yeah. But then Voyager really, really like the captain and the engineer and, and seven and seven and nine and what's her name the the th- three year old adult girl. Oh, 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 oh what my gosh. What is her name? All right, what is her name? Hmm. Wow. Daryl, you're supposed to know this. <laughs> it's, it's the lunch guy's uh, yeah. girlfriend. Tu- oh, oh. Tu- oh. Tu- not Tuvok. Neelix. Neelix's no. girlfriend. girlfriend Wife. Is, oh. is... Anyway. Yeah, I'm ca- I can't think of it either now. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, they were all characters that there were story around, and they focused on those, those three, or those four, really well in Voyager, whereas... Um, you know that there wasn't there wasn't much for Deanna other than getting impregnated by weird space babies and uh, Doctor Crusher, which was a weird ghost romance. Um, those two were, yeah. Next Generation did not treat their their women as well as they could have, but at the same time, I guess um, neither did uh, the original series. They only had Uhura and Nurse Chapel. Yeah, there was, like, you would see a skirt every now and then, but, yeah. you know, yeah. not very often. And I say that because, you know, that's what they did. They put the women in the dresses, and the guy, I wasn't making an offhanded reference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, and that's how the, the first season of Next Generation was. Really? And the guys yeah. were in dresses, too, then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some of the guys yeah, were in dresses. See, they equaled out. Then. That's yeah, why that, I didn't notice which, it as much. I just wish they would have touched on that. Like, what's the social reform there? And I'm okay yeah. with it, but like, where'd that come from? Because I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think they so overall, overcompensated from TOS. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I could see that because they um, knew that they had kind of screwed up. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so overall, Shirley, what do you what do you, what'd you think of the episode? Um, I mean, it's it's kind of near and dear to my heart, so okay. I, I really, really, I really enjoyed watching it again. Um, I it wasn't as bad as I feared it was going to be. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm just gonna notice everything in it, yeah, because you know of, all, of everything that we've watched and the advancements that have been yeah. in the film, and I didn't like it was good. It was for what it was. It was yeah. good, so I loved it. What do you think, Daryl? Yeah, I, I really liked it too. Um, I liked the the kind of the moral of the story of it, where would you rather live underground in an illusion where your life is everything it could be, or would you rather be out and free and not able to do very much? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we didn't really touch on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, moral of the story is uh, aliens are bad, right? <laughs> What? I feel bad. Um, um, yeah, so uh, I, overall I thought it was okay. I was ready for it to be weird. Um, it also helps that I don't have the the roots in the original series. I'm actually looking forward to the original series a lot because I don't have those roots. Um, so that that I think that helps a lot. Yeah. What was that? What was that look for, Shirley? You kind of were nodding off there a couple times. Uh, yeah, well, it was also <laughs> it was a little slow, but again. That's that's the '60s, and that's what the '60s does with. Uh, it makes you nod off the yeah, '60s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love Seven Samurai, and I nodded off during that a lot. So, 
Um, well, Daryl, let's talk a little bit about the podcast you're on. So you co-host This Week in Trek, so give us a little rundown on that. Oh, well, let's see. What do we do? We just did one today, so it should be fresh. Um, what do we do? We just talk about Star Trek. Just at, Usually the bulk of the show is just any episode. We'll pick any episode just out of the air, any series, it doesn't matter, and we'll watch it and play a bunch of clips and talk about it is the main main thing. And then there's emails and stuff like that. Right on. And the Grumpy Cast is about two of Grumpy Guys? <laughs> Pretty much. We we get together and, and gripe about stuff and then but it's not all just a, a bunch of grumps grumping. We figure out positive things that come from bad things and people uh send MP threes in and, and write in with their problems and we talk about stuff and we try to make things positive. So we okay. take therapy. the negatives and try to make them positive. What right day on. is that on? I'm going to have to look that podcast up. That is every other Thursday, but I think we're going to skip this week because Hammond has a surgery or on something. I'm not, I don't remember what it is. <laughs> Goodness. Um, and the morning stream you're on uh, almost daily, so what's that one like? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just sorry. I answer a hard <laughs> trivia question. That's, that's the main <laughs> thing and, well, and, they they talk a lot around different stuff and i put my two cents in on whatever they talk about right on it's and then you get to eat weird food yeah yeah there's food testing too <laughs> how's that going so far uh, well it's usually not too bad today's um it was what was it it was some kind of oh oh yeah Teri- <laughs> teriyaki fish stuff that just Ugh. it stunk so bad i God. i just barely ripped open the package and <laughs> the room started to stink super bad so i i didn't want to open it because i people i mean this is at work where i do this so i'd get in trouble oh, no. so i sealed it back up and i came home and fed it to the cat <laughs> the cat okay. loved it. Oh my wow. gosh. Well, right on. That's great. All right. Well, um, <laughs> um, we can find you guys find you on Twitter, right? At the Trek Nerd. Yep, that's it. Where you tweet about uh, all kinds of neat stuff about Trek occasionally, right? Yeah, most mostly Trek. <laughs> random junk too. Right on. Right on. Um, well, cool. Um, and we will talk to you guys real soon. Thanks for having me on. And that'll do us tonight for There Are Four Lights! Remember, you can email us at There Are Four Lights Podcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash nerds domain, on Twitter at nerds domain, or over at our site nerdsdom.com. Be sure to sign up for the newsletter while you're there. You can head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. A big thanks to 5-Year Mission for their music. You can find them at 5yearmission.net. Don't forget you can support us at patreon.com forward slash nerdsdomain. And check out our shirts at Slash Loot.